Hey, Christine. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. And Herman, I think uh, I think we are going. <laughs> Good. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Herman Fernandez. I'm the CEO and President of ISAN. Um, this afternoon, uh, we're going to continue with uh, our webinar series. As many of you have already attended several of our webinars that we have uh, performed in the past, um, our webinar series, we try to bring top speakers from the agricultural world that represent the latest trends and cover the hottest topics um, in agribusiness. So in the past, uh, we, we, we have different topics uh, about global supply chain and COVID uh, from Flavio Sueta. We spoke about uh, cellular agriculture uh, um, from, um, from Cellular Agriculture Canada. We also uh, have spoken about vertical farming with uh, InFarm. Um, Joas Matthew spoke about uh, insects for food and feed. Uh, we also spoke about big data, uh, big data analysis in the agricultural sector from Guillermo, and we have many more uh, topics that are happening in the coming weeks. So today, uh, I have the, the honor to be able uh, to present uh, Christine Brunel Lino. Uh, she is the vice president and head of sustainable agriculture at Bayer AG Crop Science Division uh, in crop strategy and portfolio management. She leads uh, the development and implementation of the sustainable agriculture strategy of Bayer at global level. Uh, with, the with the sustainable agriculture team, uh, she sets and coordinates the, success the six sustainability focus areas, defines ambitious targets support supported by science-based uh, methodologies, looking to get an impact and transformation of business uh, and agriculture. With regards to the webinar today, she will speak about the best practices on building an impact strategy. So you will be able to discover how Biocross Sciences sustainability has been built. Okay, so thank you very much, Christine. So before she starts, I'm just gonna give you uh, a few logistics uh, tips for the webinar. So you will be able to ask uh, questions, but these will be answered at the end. So you can type them, and at the end, Christine will be able uh, to answer them. During the webinar as well, uh, Christine has prepared um, a few questions that she wants to share with the audience. Uh, and at that moment, we will ask for specific answers for those uh, for those questions. Okay, so uh, I'm going to leave it uh, with Christine, uh, and uh, and you know if you if there is any issue. Or anything you can type anything on the chat and i will be uh supervising the chat and answering any questions you may have if you have any issues thank you thank you very much thank you german for the introduction so uh, that's my pleasure to be with you today um, and i very much appreciate the opportunity uh, given by the uh, international school of agri management to uh, give me the floor for discussing with you guys and uh, introduce you uh, how we have been uh, setting the uh, strategy for sustainable agriculture at biocrop science 
uh, and I will explain how we have been working to make it absolutely impactful to transform agriculture for make it more sustainable. So um, with that, um, the way I will be proceeding is that um, I have only two chapters on my presentation. So first is about how we have been working into setting up a sustainability approach at buyer and new buyer looking for impact. And on the chapter two, I will explain about how we have been uh, looking after one specific example, which is about our greenhouse gas commitment to uh, tackle climate change. So uh, let me start first with um, how everything started. Uh, maybe you remember August 2018, uh, Bayer was coming uh, first uh, um, uh, one company. Uh, we were merging Bayer, Monsanto, and both legacy have very strong experience into working into sustainability. But that means that you need to reconvene everybody and discuss about, OK, where do we want to be? And of course, there was a very important discussion which occurred at the board of management of Bayer. And you might be uh, aware of uh, four company archetypes. And, um, and, and then and during these discussions of the board management, it was a lot of discussions, where are we and where do we want to be? And you can see here that there is two circles, the blue and the green. The blue is about the stakeholder value and the green is more about the societal and environmental engagement. So on one hand is business, on the other would be more sustainability. And, and um, depending on uh, the companies, you, you have different settings. And, and Bayer decided to set our ambitions to be an impact generator. So basically where we see profit at the same level that sustainability. And Werner Baumann, our CEO, has made very strong statement about saying in the future we will be reporting on this, uh, the same way our financial profit figures and our sustainability figures. So it means that's very uh, important for us was to, to come all together and looking after the way we are doing business and the way we are doing an impact. And that was really essential in the way we have been then structuring the biocrop science commitments for sustainability. What is also very important in our learning that uh, we cannot be the only ones to evaluate our sustainability roadmap. So what is also very important here is to invite people at the table and discuss. And here, uh, what we have been setting um, to support us into revising our sustainability strategy is to set a sustainability council. So made of different profile, very international, very diverse in terms of background, some working for a private company, some working for NGOs, and um, all very much experience into our, uh, sustainability, targeting. And uh, the point is, is to say we need them to provide us guidance around the way we are doing things. Are we taking into account the right elements? Are we focusing on the right area at the same time? How do we measure our progress and how do we report? And um, is that still on track? And you know that the commitment is not about for the next two years, it's about the next 10 years. And of course, then you need guidance because you need to challenge yourself all the time about I, I am doing the right thing. So that is a very, very important element that we have been putting in place to have this uh, sustainable concerns to support us. Then, um, now coming to crop science. So you might know that Bayer is set into three big divisions. So one is about crop science in agriculture, uh, consumer health, and the pharmaceuticals. And here I will be focusing around crop science and, and agriculture. So of course, what was also then the next step was to say, hey, um, now what would be our strategic pillars as, as a company, as a divisions? And uh, we are aiming to benefit to farmers, to consumers and our planet. So that means that we have been looking after what are the strategic pillars we need to establish in order that we can deliver meaningful solutions at the same time for the customers, for our growers, and at the same time ensure that we are meeting expectations towards long-term sustainable goals. 
that's the reasons why the pillars are set around uh, world-class innovation. So we are an R&D company, so we believe in science and we believe that the future will be made of innovations and more science. We need to uh, pioneer the digital transformation. So, and we believe that this digitalization of agriculture will be key to enable a lot of our commitments and solutions in the future. And last but not least, set up new standard in sustainability. So, and we believe that this can be pulled all together towards tailored solutions. So that's what we are looking at, built up in three major pillars in our biocrop science uh, visions for the future. Then, um, that was about buyer internally, that's us. But then, of course, what you need to do is to look after um, uh, the environment and what's going on on the planet. And, and what we are referring to here is about the uh, the model of the planetary boundary. So it's it's pretty known uh, model, so known as, well as, a, as a donuts. You have the planetary boundaries. Um, where you need to check about are you beyond and uh, the, these boundaries and where are the the impact today and the central part for a part is looking after people and um, and it's about the social foundations and what was absolutely obvious and you could see here that uh, there is biodiversity loss which is extending and exceeding the planetary boundaries Greenhouse gas emissions and climate change have heavily impacted the entire food system and we need to address it. And also the uh, nitrogen and phosphorus cycles, which is of course very much connected to that. So what we decided is to look at this and this excellent guidance for us to say where we need to put some focus and where we can best impact around this, this element. Addressing also of course the social element. Um, that's the reasons why we land into um, uh, other considerations uh, around looking at um, more people is coming on the planet. So we're expecting 2.2 uh, billion more people by 2050. That means increasing food. So there is no way that we need, we need to increase productivity and to intensify ecology at the same time because you need to balance the paradox. You need to increase uh, food productions at the same time so you need to reduce the impact on the environment and that's difficult but that's exactly where we need to put all our energy into uh, developing new technology and R&D and at the same time sharing the value with the customers with the growers the growers need to benefit for doing the right things and then already you can think that mm, we are looking after making a change so on the way we are operating and making business and uh, that's also about impacting on the on the field on the crop systems that we can support with technology at the same time proactively looking after our r d and our technology about how our pipeline need to look like by the next 10 years. So it's about really a long, a long way and different groups that then you need to think about how you can best accompany, accompany them in order that they're resetting the targets. So that's where we, we, we land now. We have uh, this context of we need to preserve biodiversity um, and um, we need to ensure that, um, so we do have equations because I cannot see any more the screen, sorry. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, as I said before, we want to be an impact generator. We are looking after the planetary boundaries and we have a strong focus to balance the paradox between feeding the planet, reducing the impact. Then we land into six sustainability focus area. So about carbon neutrality, advancing carbon neutrality in agriculture, looking at our own operations, carbon neutrality, and addressing about what's happening in the field. With the growers, looking at the environment impact and thinking around crop protections Crop protection products are safe when they are registered and used according to the registration and the label, but they still have an impact. And we need to reduce this impact of field impact. And that's really where we have been really, really working into methodology. 
The last one is about small orders. So we are, we are aiming to empowering 100 million small orders. Think about the boundaries on the circle in the middle was about social and community. Here we want to equip, we want to empower and train farmers, small farmers in order they can go wealthy and develop better access technologies and new solutions. Three other commitments very important to us, um, and uh, today I will not explain that's a bit too long, but it's about biodiversity, of course, and soil health, very, very important to us, uh, to balance the need of for crop produ productions and the at the same time protect the nature and enhance biodiversity. The public responsibility to ensure that product and new technology are used on property and water efficiency, of course, about water consumption for agriculture needs to be drive down. So this is on a nutshell about the six sustainability focus area we have been looking at. And now we are focusing very much on the three first big commitments. Hi, Christine. So I'm gonna... what I want to explain on the next one was very important. Christine, yes. should, I, should I go with a question uh, that you wanted yes, in slide right. nine? Okay, so I'm gonna uh, just so just one second. Just one second. So, yeah, and yeah, and now here. So the first one was about responsibility. Yeah. So. Yes. The question is the, the following: Who's res So whose responsibility uh, is measurement, tracking, data collection? and storage. Should it be standardized across companies or farms? So please feel free to type down the answer uh, for that question so uh, Christine can get the feedback, okay? So I repeat yes. the question and I give you a few seconds. Whose responsibility is the measurement, tracking, data collection, and storage? Should it be standardized across companies or farms? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then you will understand about the why we have asking this, this question. So um, could we go back to the slide? So I think uh, we're just going to do number that one, number two. So let's see if they, well, you, you can continue if they, uh, let, let's continue with the presentation. Okay. So yeah. Sure. yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and this question about the reporting is really, really important because uh, what we position that's very, very important is about the tracking of your performance and being transparent. So we have established task force specifically looking after having an impact and how do you set a target and a methodology where you can really measure your impact over time. And it seems to be very, very trivial, but looking after the six area, it's about understanding what is, um, uh, what has a trade off, what has the different co implications for when you, you're working on soil health, you have an impact on biodiversity, but you also do have an impact on greenhouse gas. So it's about being mindful about where you have an impact, what are the trade off, what are the synergies, and what are the levers that you have to improve these synergies. So the, the, the group and the task force has been working after defining the scope about what are we looking at when we talk about, for example, greenhouse gas. What has a set of indicators which are existing today? What has a set of data? Where are they? Where are they? Uh, in company, internally, externally, what has a practice, how we can access, how we can uh, work together to, to have this um, understanding about uh, data uh, gathering and how we can report it. And of course, you need to check about, is it achievable? Are, are, you, are we looking for enough of uh, greenhouse gas reductions? So we need to understand where are the biggest uh, crop country uh, where Bayer is acting and where we do have the biggest influence because that's what you want. You want to have an impact. Then you need to validate the potential of reductions of your different levers. Then you need to talk with R&D, you need to talk with your commercials, you need to talk with uh, uh, agronomists to understand about what if I will recommend in the future these practices, would that have an impact and in, can I measure this impact? So that means you need to work also very closely with R&D. 
Uh, and of course, you need to check about your scalability. What, what's the unlock potential and how you can make it happening? And of course, that means you need to about to think your levers and how they can be triggered and supported by your business. Because the way buyer is influencing the market, it's through the technologies and the connections we have with farmers. And then working with them will allow then adoptions of practices. And that's where as well you need to think about how can I um, influence, how can I trigger the adoptions of practices and technology who can improve uh, and reduce, it, for example, the field greenhouse gas emissions. So that was absolutely key because, of course, what we have been saying is we want to be um, uh, re uh, audited and supported by panel of experts. They will review our data and understand and ask us. And they will ask us about where do you start to work in this country while you have a very, very tiny, tiny uh, business uh, there. How do you dare we can influence? Of course we can't. So we need to look after where are the biggest opportunity as well for influencing. So, and that's the reasons why I was asking about this thing, that who is responsible for reporting? Should that be standardized or should all the ISO uh, with it? So, that, that I will look at the chat and maybe we can discuss at the end of the, of the uh, discussions, of the other presentations. But I wanted just to, to say with this slide that we, we have set up guiding principles and we do have guiding trans um, principles when we have been discussing right away the sustainability strategy. And here is the following. First, we have been asked to focus on transformational topic where we can make a change. We have been asked as well to be ambitious. It's not just to make it like flat and say, okay, that will be fine. And we, are, we believe that the planet today needs to be supported and we need to address climate change. And it's not about doing the same thing we were doing in the past that we change anything. So it's about being transformational and ambitious. That means that we need to keep farmers perspective. What do they think? How we can support them? and uh, how we can create value for them, but value also for the society in order that this is also recognized for being doing the right thing in agriculture. And agriculture is part of the solution. That's exactly what is a big motivation for us. And um, at the third point, what is important is to be very close to our business and to ensure that remember the two circles that business working end in end with sustainability and we are looking after our future technology, working with portfolio, thinking about how best we can telomet this portfolio in order that is supporting our commitments. And of course, uh, you cannot just go to your R&D guys and say, hey, I want you to develop a new technology more sustainable. You need to explain what do you expect. You need to explain what are the new targets and what um, needs to be implemented afterwards in the field. So that's not only about one, one show from a, from a group of sustainability colleagues working together at Bayer. It's really about working with all parts of the company from the strategy, the marketing, the R&D colleagues, and the sales reps in order that we ensure that we speak one voice and we have the same understanding about the targets we want to achieve and how we can uh, combine our effort for business uh, deliverables, but at the same time for sustainability. So here, now I can continue on the second part to explain specifically um, where we are doing the greenhouse event, as an example, uh, to illustrate the implementation of the strategy and how we move forward. So um, you have a different level of commitments. Um, at the beginning of the, my presentation, I was explaining about Bayer, Bayer as a group. So um, Bayer Group has a commitment for being carbon neutral by 2030. So we are committed to achieve the carbon neutrality by uh, changing also our, our, our operations and uh, along all the value chains by 2030, looking after a different way of um, buying um, renewable energy and reducing our footprint from our own operations. 
and uh, we are we are looking after so upstream emissions and we became so a science-based target member since uh, November 2019 where we uh, we commit to reduce also the emissions uh, our emissions through engagement with our suppliers so in the greenhouse gas terms uh, just to translate it, that means that we are looking after scope three, which is about our suppliers, working with them, asking for reductions and how we can collaborate to achieve uh, reductions on our science, which would be reported through the science based target. Then on scope one and two, which is about our own operations, so looking for carbon neutrality and looking after optimizations and efficiency of our operations and as well compensation. And last but not least, with agriculture, looking specifically about how we can advance carbon neutrality in agriculture by contributing in the reductions of by 30% the field greenhouse gas by 2030. I will explain a bit further uh, the way we want to do that. So, uh, and, and that is coming closer to the way we will operate in the future uh, through our solutions. Our commitment is about the reductions, achieve the reductions by 30% of the field greenhouse gas on the most emitting cropping system than buyer serves. And why it matters, again, because um, uh, agriculture accounts for around a quarter of the global gas emissions. So that means that agriculture is a big emitter, but is also now part of the solutions because we can implement climate smart solutions. So it's a big challenge, but uh, we believe that uh, we are well equipped and we are seeking for partners to ensure that we can achieve this commitment by 2030. About the scope of our effort, it's not only about CO2, of course, it's about focusing about nitrogen oxides and azomethane and considering the different cropping systems where are the different uh, emissions are the biggest ones. And uh, I was mentioning at the beginning a bit earlier that we are looking at for R&D and our uh, marketing strategy and portfolio. And you can see here where are the levers. We, we think that crop genetics um, can really contribute to uh, these commitments by increasing biomass, by increasing yield. And also uh, crop protection agents are very important to close the agronomic gap and preserve and enhance the yield, which is an important component on the greenhouse gas uh, emissions. Uh, water use efficiency, think about water use as a way that growers are pumping water to uh, watering the, the crop. Pumping means energy. If you reduce the pumping and do it just right to what you need, then you reduce the greenhouse gas impact. Think about soil. Everything you can do is to preserve the soil. Don't touch it, basically, if I must say it that way. That means that you should avoid tillage. You should reduce tillage. You should enhance with uh, the uh, preserve the erosion of soil by using cover crops. Cover crops are also important tools that the growers can implement to avoid um, the soil loss, but at the same time uh, sequestrate carbon in the soil. So fertilization, again, is a very important element and digital tools. So all in all, you can see here that we have been identifying what are the levers and now what are the best way that we can implement improvement in these levers for different cropping systems. So then that means you will start to be much more specific into the way that you will provide solutions to the farmers. So with that, uh, here is just uh, an example about the crop systems and how we want to advance a carbon zero future. So uh, just an example about crop system, about Ronda Predi um, Intacta, uh, which is uh, a trait, uh, excellent trait um, to reduce uh, uh, insect, um, insecticide uh, applications at the same time as well preserve uh, against uh, herbicides, uh, resistance tolerant to herbicides. So which means that here you have an opportunity to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And this can be enhanced as well by a better understanding about 
when do you need to treat, how much you need to treat, uh, which tool can be used to, for, for spray. And that announcement can be very much triggered by digital technology. What we are looking for now is about partnering with the best technology providers to ensure that this can be contributing to other reductions to greenhouse gas. Um, another example would be on rice system. You know that rice is a big cropping system in terms of emissions, emissions of methane. And here we are exploring opportunity to change to uh, a dry seed rice technology in order that you reduce dramatically the methane redu uh, emissions. So there are a lot of levers that the farmers are more or less using today. What we want to enhance is the possibility to implement them more consistently where they need and where they can be also uh, rewarded for doing good for agriculture and the planet. And, and that's where also, we are working with uh, our colleagues from commercial about how we can best support them into uh, delivering these solutions. So um, here my last slide, and I hope that we will have a good discussion afterwards, is um, what is I was trying to explain is that when defining a sustainability strategy, you really need to think about where you want to be in two years, in five years, in 10 years. Uh, do you want to be um, a game changer? Do you want to, to have an impact? Yes. So then in this case, about how that needs to be translated into engaging with a different department in your company and make them contribute. And you don't have to drive it by your own as sustainability manager, but much more let the others do it because they know how to do it the best. And you need to discuss jointly about the targets, about ambition and the way you will um, uh, track the uh, implementations of these different levers. So the progress will be measured by comparing the future solutions with the status of the current market standard. So it's about baselining and where you want to be with which technology and how you are going to implement that. And um, you need to achieve a sustainable solution that find a common ground with those uh, who grow our food and those who consume it. So that means that you need to connect the farmers with the market and with the end consumers. That means invi invite everyone to contribute and give opinions, give a chance for feedback. As I was mentioning, the sustainability council. So that's exactly what we are looking for feedback and recommendations. And uh, what we are aiming as well very, uh, is to be very transparent on the way we want to generate value uh, to farmers, to agriculture, in order that we can trigger changes for better sustainable uh, practices. And um, we also want to report publicly around our commitments uh, in order that um, everyone can look at the way we have been doing. And we will be happy to see that everyone is all um, doing the same, uh, looking for transparency uh, and uh, science in our sustainability approach. So that was my last slide. So, um, uh, I hope that now we can have good discussions and uh, maybe I can read your message and listen to your recommendation on my first question. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Christine. Uh, I think we already have a couple of questions uh, that I've uh, highlighted already. They were like comments uh, following up uh, your your presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. If you if you want, uh, do you want me to share the other two questions that you wanted to? Um, that we discussed before, so people yes. have time to think about the questions. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. Yeah, all right. So uh, we mentioned the other one. Okay, uh, so the other two questions is how do you best communicate impact to the public in a meaningful way mm -hmm. by farmers or governments? Okay, that should be uh, the one. Um, the last one is what can uh, what could be the best ways to incentivize action towards impactful sustainability targets okay so i'll wait a few seconds uh and then uh what we can do uh, i will post the, the questions that will appear here in the middle okay good so so let's start this way
So uh, already, uh, so we have a few. One second, let me put this here because Juanjo is writing. Question. Uh, all right. Okay, so I'm going to start with the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll close this. So the first one from Maria Fernanda. Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, see. I don't no, see. no, no. Okay. So private internal audits are our responsibility. But in order to coax private companies to do so, legislation and policy should be passed to foster those practices. So it's like a statement uh, that she's, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can I can understand. So um, I think as well, the, um, I agree. Uh, private internal audits um, um, is that that's a responsibility. But um, probably we can think about having external uh, audits, and and that would be maybe the way I would be looking at and thinking about maybe um, uh, external auditors can have a look on the way we are reporting things, and we can be also transparent about sharing what they're telling us and. Uh, um, yeah, I, I think that's 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 an so interesting approach. And probably okay, legislation and policy pass some foster mm -hmm. practices. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was an answer of the first question that that, that she made. Uh, Maria, she was she was mentioning that. Okay. So yeah. now uh, another another answer about one of the questions we just put. So uh, okay. not this one. Sorry, uh, is this one. So when we were talking about communication, so yeah. uh, Juanjo is saying that communication and uh, communicating impact, leading by example is the best way. Mm -hmm. uh, walk the talk, that, 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 that is the best way uh, to go forward. Okay. Totally agree, totally agree. All yeah. right. The next one, another statement from Maria. So uh, conviction for farmers that economic feasibility can only happen through sustainable practices is also part of an educational campaign, not only for them or for us, but also for society and consumers and public institutions. Public institutions should not only demand compliance, but be coherent by supporting farmers with financial assistance, marketing and a cross section of support strategies. Okay, very interesting comment. Yeah, there. very constructive, appreciated. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, next one uh so the next one is regarding opportunities from diego uh so uh which opportunities have latin american professionals to get in touch with you uh, they have some projects in mind i guess they are related uh to what you discuss <laughs> interesting uh yeah you you're welcome to uh, to contact me um Latin America uh, is a very important, uh, yeah, countries, continent for uh, for, for buyers. So um, yeah, looking forward. Okay, great. All right. Um, let's wait a little bit more. There's like four people typing for questions. So let's wait uh, a few seconds until we get uh, they get those questions. Okay, I see a few people. So let's wait. I mean, all in all, I think it was really interesting. Uh, what you mentioned, how uh, for sustainability is really important to get all the company on and all the different stakeholders, they really need to be involved. You know, it's not like a buzzword anymore. It is like it has to be like a essential and key part for the strategy and for the subsistence of companies. Because I think if you don't go that way, uh, it's going to be very difficult to survive. Yeah, right. and I think it's important. The, um, it's, it's really important to have this engagement because it helps really to reflect about what you are doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also the way you communicate, and um, that always brings some different perspective, which is really mm. helpful in the in the um, for the company. Totally. Okay, we have uh, two more questions. Yeah. So the f next one. one second. From Constantin, uh, would you agree that the stakeholders have quite different sustainability interests? How would you integrate sometimes different priorities in your strategy? Really interesting. Yes, um, I think you know uh, you 
I, I totally agree. Yeah, stakeholders have different uh, interests and perspectives, absolutely. And uh, um, basically, if even I'm, I'm looking at just my example on greenhouse gas is about thinking like um, I'm looking beyond my scope three when I'm working with the farmers, but the farmers are the scope uh, three years old of uh, um, they, they have scope one and two for them. And uh, working with, for food industry, they are also um, uh, connecting the dots between the both company. And we might have different perspective into the way you account, into the way you want to track also. And um, yeah, different interests about communicating what you are doing. So um, yeah, integrating different priorities. I think that um, it's important to keep a very global perspective um sometimes very important topics uh from a global perspective it sounds that very uh, topics are very high highly ranked as a priority while you need to be in a country to realize that you might have a different perspective mm. and maybe somewhere you will say oh greenhouse gas so important but the reality for other countries it's about small orders because the entire market is small orders driven so and you have a completely different perspective to approach them so uh, yes um and um here it's a global commitment but we will implement them where it makes sense and relevance for the country uh, because otherwise you cannot uh, yeah you need to prioritize yeah i think and i agree with what you just said depending on the country they have uh you know different issues are more or less uh, a priority depending on mm -hmm. each country okay yeah. thank you good next one from qvu there are new trending plant-based meats yeah. alternative to beef and porks uh, like impossible burger and beyond meat but people are concerned with the GMO with the products. Do you think it is the last resort to switch to plant-based meat products? And in the long term, we have to accept the GMO uh, products. That, that's a that's a good uh, good question. Uh, thank you. Um, no, I don't think. I think we need to keep all the options open. There is no means to impose anything. Or force any acceptance so where there is no acceptance so um, um, we will be all evolving uh, I think all the society um, will be evolving uh, we need to admit all I think that changes need to happen mm. and uh, that can be about a different diet thinking about different source of protein yes um, and uh, I think we really, really need to keep everything open. And I will not say that the last chance uh, go there or you must accept this. Um, I think that um, each individual will have to make his choice on the very freely. And um, especially if we are looking for a sustainable diet in the future, that needs to be uh, think as a personal choice. So that's really what I was saying. Again, uh, we need to keep all the science and opportunity open to think around this challenge about uh, reducing uh, maybe meat consumptions over time. Yeah. Next one from Jorge. Will buyer reduce the amount of input like fertilizers and pesticides as part of the sustainable strategy? And if so, how will you make the money instead? I mean, how you will it? Yeah. Well, that income, you know, from other products, I guess. Yeah. So that, that's a very, very good question. Um, this has been heavily uh, debate and, and discussed in our sustainability strategy. Mm -hmm. So what we have been looking after crop protections and uh, it was about inputs in agriculture. And it was very much about thinking about um, they, are, they, they have an impact and we need to reduce this impact. And the question was about how do we understand the way they are impacting? And um, we do have a commitment about reductions by 30% the environmental impact of crop protection. So looking at the different levers and means, one of these levers is about volume, one of them, but it's not only. There is a lot of other levers that can be implemented to reduce the impact of crop protection in the field.
looking after what leaves the field, where are the off targets, what's happening, and what needs to mean in target on the plant. And uh, there is uh, that where you are when you are thinking in terms of methodology, you really need to look after where are the impacts and where are the levers for that. Input and volume, it's one, but it's only one. There is other drivers. Thank you. Really good question. So next one. From Juanjo. The enormous quantity of products that buyer sells uh, make, make it generate a large plastic footprint. Uh, why reducing is not a priority in the sustainable strategy? So, in fact, it's, um, um, I think it's, 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 part, it's part of it because um, um, I did not have time to comment everything, but we do have a commitment of, uh, around the product responsibility, which is about uh, the um, proper handling of products and, um, and empty containers management. And empty containers, uh, empty containers management is a critical uh, area we are looking at. So it is embedded and uh, contained under this uh, product responsibility. So yes, I agree. Uh, uh, there is uh, a lot of efforts to be done and it's all about how you properly handle the, the empty containers uh, uh, ensure that they are not going to environment and pollute with plastic. It's 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 a core element in our strategy. Okay, thank you, thank you for your answer, Christine. So the next one from Maria Fernanda. So she agrees that we are on the same boat. Uh, yeah. Communication from farmers come from their own motivation and greed, passion and perseverance. However. Consciousness varies, and there is sadly a long way to go to implement uh, those practices. In addition, from a financial perspective, certain sustainability practices can be troublesome and expensive to implement, thus discouraging certain uh, growers. The positive side is that agriculture has now become a prior priority for policymakers, mm -hmm. thus farming being looked at as a more dignified sector um, with greater economic and hopefully more government support. Uh, globally, I would say, yeah, that is happening. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, um, we, we need to, uh, to ensure that we involve the farmers and not asking too much into implementing lots of things without ensuring that they will be rewarded. So, and there is different way to reward farmers. So we need to work with the different levers that we have here. Incentivations is one part. And you're right, governments also have a, a say on, on this one. They have a, a major role to ensure that the farmers will be encouraged to continue to uh, produce high quality food at the same time to reduce the footprint. Uh, I agree. Uh, there is a financial perspective to always take into account with farmers. Thank you, Maria Fernanda. Mm. Uh, so the next one um, from Kubu uh, is studying uh, about digitalization and implementation of new technology, AI, Internet of Things, blockchain, and its potential to apply new technology to have better production, better mm -hmm. quality, more quantity with better efficiency, minimal human cost, which may consequently cut many people from agricultural jobs in developing countries. Okay, so what would you personally suggest? people in these countries to prepare for replacement or companies in these countries, including buyer, uh, doing to satisfy as much as possible all the stakeholders, including the farmers themselves. I mean, there is a dilemma uh, between both things. Uh, that's what uh, the question is. Hmm. That's, a, that's a very good one. What I can see is also that uh, depending on the countries, we have a lack of um, labor. So that's something important to consider. So I see an opportunity that uh, digital can support that. Um, I think as though that uh, looking at small orders, um, there is a lot of people who rather be at school and educated and access to better technology to, to make them grow. So here, and I think digital will be an important element for them for reaching out to them, educations, and, and allow them to participate in certain yeah, markets. So that would be typically important for me to, for them. Um, I, I think that digitalizations would be um, value creating for, for the labor uh, to work into better conditions. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, probably at, at some point, if you think about robots for harvesting that will replace uh, workers in the, in the field, yes. Um, yes, uh, but uh, these people, uh, we, we can ensure that uh, they, they will access to a different role and activities or control the, the robots. So having robots doesn't mean that you don't have anybody else now in the field. So that that's, um, but there is also, and I think that's important uh, point you are making, Kyuvu, it's about transitioning. And that's mm. very important to prepare the transitions and uh, ensure that uh, yeah everybody is prepared to these to, to, to these changes yeah. yeah yeah i think it's a process as you were saying right yeah. it's a process and depending on the the development of every country you know it will be at different uh, speed all right yeah. next one has buyer considered ghg emitted uh, by animals Ah, uh, yeah, we, we, we had a lot of discussions around, around that. And especially when I was mentioning at the beginning that it's important to define the scope, uh, of, of uh, the greenhouse gas, uh, commitment. Uh, but, um, greenhouse gas emitted by, by animals, it's, it's out of our business, let's say, out of our direct business. So we contribute. Uh, for feeding uh, animals, that for sure. So we can think about maybe solutions with crops who reduce uh, emissions by the animals. But uh, as I said, um, we we are we are not in this business, um, and um, that's why we said uh, better for now. A focus where we have uh, the biggest influence. That means in the field, in the crop system at first, and then see how we can accompany. Uh, agriculture in that path mm-hmm. yeah next one so to offset ghg do you believe in, in increasing productivity per unit area and conserving as much as possible natural habitats or rather having a lower productivity per unit area and conserving lesser areas therefore using more land for that ah that's a good question um I uh, think that's what is really, really critical is to increase productivity per unit, uh, to intensify uh, productivity and um, um, and reduce the greenhouse gas per crop in per crop produced. So it's about being efficient. And um, at the same time, we need, and that's really for me very important because it can reduce the need for more land. So you avoid expansion, so you avoid deforestation, possible deforestations, and you need to ensure that you keep your natural habitats. Looking after habitats will be very important to leverage, to develop uh, biodiversity, which is also an important contri- contributor to agriculture. So, uh, and however, what we, we can think about is about identifying the area where you have a lower productivity, where you might consider that might not be needed to produce at this part. So um, I, I believe that the future is very much into um, ensuring high productivity in a very defined level of area, so increasing mm-hmm. per units and um, avoid uh, expansion um, of, of agriculture, so limit uh, and stop land use change. That's really, really important. And uh, preserve and develop further habitats in the landscape of the, of the crop system. Uh, let's see if you have any, any, any more questions. Uh, I mean, I think we have very interesting questions, actually, uh, for sure. Uh, so I'll leave a few seconds. I think somebody else is typing. Yeah. We, uh, we are also reaching the hour, so let's let's try and stick to the time. Okay. I'll wait a few more seconds. Um, see. No, I I also like the comment that they were saying like uh, the governments now they're going to take more seriously uh the policy making uh the importance of agriculture um so so i really believe that we all we all have uh we all we all need to support this you know like from companies institutions you know uh 
everybody uh, should get involved here. I agree. Thank you. So I don't think there is any more questions. Uh, Christine, uh, thanks for your time. I think it's really been insightful. See what you are doing in Bayer, and I really hope uh, you know we can we can do similar webinars in the near future. And um, again, thanks for your time. Um, and you know, looking forward to meeting you, hopefully here in Almeria, in Isang, or wherever. Okay, no, thank you. That would be my pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your great questions. And uh, yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.